Ian Wallace is a professional dream psychologist and author of the Top 100 Dreams, the dreams that we all have and what they really mean. Ian has analysed over 100,000 dreams. You wouldn't think there'd be that many throughout his career. And he says exploring our dreams is the most powerful way to understand what we want out of life and how we can achieve it. I think we have somebody on the phone right now for you. So, Nicola, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much. You're in Dartmoor in Devon? Yes. Good yes. afternoon. And uh, what is your dream? I'm walking down a country lane. It's got high hedges either side. And I feel on top of the world. The sun is shining, the sky is blue, birds are singing, and I'm really happy. And then I walk around the next bend, and I'm confronted by a massive black bull. It's pouring the ground, his head's down, lowered, and ready to charge. Did you say a black bull? Yes. Right. An animal, black bull. And I'm trapped, and I've got nowhere to run to, no escape, and I feel absolute terror at the thought of being gored and trampled. And it's at this point I wake up, always the same, it's a recurring dream. And I wake up shaking and petrified. Good grief. OK, thank you, Nicola, for that. In Dartmoor and Devon, here's Ian Wallace. Hey, Nicola, that's a great dream. Any time you dream about an animal, Nicola, you're dreaming about your own instincts and impulses. Right. So the lane is the path that you're taking through life. It's your particular approach to life. Uh, you're pretty sunny and happy. And you like to keep things quiet and peaceful, keep things light, but within certain boundaries. So that's the high hedges on either side. When you dream about a bull, you're dreaming about areas in life where you get a bit frustrated or maybe you feel a bit stubborn. Even though you try to keep things light most of the time, sometimes you actually want to express that frustration and just vent it. But you feel if you do that, it will be quite destructive and might cause upset for other people. So the message from this dream, Nicola, is just to release your frustration sometime and just sometimes say what's on your mind and not care that you're going to upset someone because of that. I see. <laughs> Does it ever resolve itself? Does the dream end, even if you're halfway through it, just stop with some other ending? No, always the same, exactly the same. Never, never alters. There's one thing you can do, Nicola, if you keep having this dream, which is a really, really cool thing to do. It takes a little bit of practice. But when the bull is there, just say to the bull, who are you and what do you need? Oh. And usually you'll hear an answer and it will give you a clue what to do in waking life to stop having this dream. Only in your dreams can you have a talking bull. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be a bull or could it be any animal that's threatening in some way? Any animal that's threatening and the type of animal shows what is happening in waking life. So a bull is usually around some sort of frustration, some pent-up energy. Right, I see. Thank you, Nicola. That's interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Ta-da. Here's an email from Adrian Shattuck that Tim has in front of him. Yep, from Adrian, who says, I have a lot of driving-related dreams which usually involve me swerving to miss being caught in an accident. In one, I'm going quite fast along the motorway when a group of men run on the road. This forces me to slam on the brakes so that I don't actually run into them. I yell at them as I pass by, but they seem oblivious to this. In another dream, a bus is careering erratically down the road, swerving from side to side, and at one point, it comes so close that I'm sure it's going to crash into me. What could this mean, he asks. Any time we dream about driving dreams, we're dreaming about our work and career, we're dreaming about our drives and ambitions, and an accident about to happen is a fear of a loss of control in waking life. So Adrian's going down a motorway, so his career is going very smoothly and quickly, and then these men run onto it. So it's probably some skills or something that he's had to learn to progress his career, but it means temporarily he's had to put the brakes on his career. Wow. And then in the next part, when the bus is coming towards him, anything to do with a bus or a train is about an organisation, a company. So there's this bus coming towards him. He can't work out what this organisation is going to do. It seems to be erratic. It's all over the place. Is it the organisation that he works for or an outside organisation? It's probably an outside organisation, so it might be some merger or acquisition that's going on. Right. And it's really interesting that we've got this word that the bus is careering, but this is also about his career. So the message from the dream is for him to just relax a bit and try not to over-control his career. Analysing your dreams with dream expert Ian Wallace, an email from James in Reading. Hi, James. I've had this recurring dream about 15 to 20 times in the last three years. At first, it disturbed me, but now I'm used to it. In the dream, I'm either a ghost or a burglar. I go through a secret door to find myself walking alone in the homes of people I don't know and in flats I've never been in before. The owners are clearly away, so I have a wander about the house looking in different rooms... <laughs> 
just kind of checking it out as much as you would when viewing exhibition rooms at a home show. What could this mean? This is an absolutely fabulous dream. So any time we dream about a house, we're dreaming about our own identity or our own self. And when we dream about a ghost, then we're dreaming about some memory of ourself, something that we've done in the past. If we dream about a burglar, then we're considering our value in waking life. So a secret door is always usually some sort of secret talent. So James has got a secret talent and all the houses and all the rooms are possibilities of what James could do. So when he's a ghost, he's remembering possibilities from the past that he should really embody in waking life. Mm. When he's a burglar, he's not valuing his talents enough. So because the owners are away, his message from himself is that he needs to own his own creativity and own his ideas. And because it's a show home, then he has to really show other people what he can do in waking life. So the message from the dream is that he's got some talent or idea or plan and he needs to bring that into waking reality. Is there any relevance to the fact that uh, being a burglar is clearly a dishonest way to go? Is it not surely about dishonesty, maybe even dishonesty with yourself? That's absolutely it, Steve. That's perfect. So he's feeling guilty that he's not actually valuing his talents enough. Right. OK, very interesting. We're going to come right back in just a moment. Don't go away. We're back here with Ian Wallace. He's our dream expert. And we're going to go, I think we can now go to Mike Carpenter in Torquay. Hello, Mike. Good afternoon, Steve. How are you doing? All right. Yeah, I'm not bad at all, thank you. OK, now listen, tell us about your dream. Ian is all tensed up listening to you right now. Go ahead. Good stuff. Well, I have a, a recurring theme. My recurring theme is fire. And I dream of fire, and it's, I always see the fire as from another person's perspective. So I can see the fire, and the fire is either behind a wall, trapped within ceilings or under floors. When I myself is actually involved in this, I'm frustrated because I can't actually get to the fire, so I'm trying to scrape through the walls to get to it. Is the fire threatening you or another person, Mike? Me and those in the room. Right, so it is a threatening fire, not a distant fire that you can't have anything to do with. Yeah, so there's two things really. One, I need to know what the fire, the relevance of the fire is, but more importantly for me is why I can never actually get to it to put it out. Well, what do you say about that? Mike, this is a great dream. So any time you dream about fire, Mike, you're dreaming about creativity, you're dreaming about something that you get all fired up about and something that you're very passionate about. So there's something you want to do in waking life and you're trying to decide what that is and you're trying to get to it. But because you're in that room and you can't see the fire because it's outside, it's beyond the walls, under the floor, above the ceiling, then you feel that the heat is on. Someone's putting the heat on you, there's a pressure for you to do something and you're trying to find out what that is. And all those parts of the room, the walls, the ceiling, the floor, are boundaries that you need to step beyond to find out what the source of that creative idea is. So this suggests that in waking life and maybe in your job, you're looking at things tactically a lot, but the message from the dream is to stand back and see the bigger picture and take a more strategic, cooler approach. And once you do that, then you'll be getting on like a house on fire. Ah, I see what you did. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Ta-da. This is brilliant, isn't it? It's this just is, great. This is so fascinating. I know. Let me ask about recurring dreams. Why do we have recurring dreams and why are they the same every time? What a recurring dream is, it's a message from your own self. So people think that dreams happen to them, but we actually happen to dreams. We create everything in the dream. So if you have a recurring dream, there's something you're trying to tell yourself, but you don't pay attention to it in waking life. But what about when something in your life gets better and you've sorted it, why do we then have the same recurring dream as if the problem is still there? There may be something else that's come up in your life where you're following the same behaviour pattern. So this very often happens in relationships and relationship dreams where you leave one relationship, but then you just play out the same behaviours and patterns in the next relationship. OK, and that's your subconscious telling you, don't do the same thing again. That's exactly it. Okay. Can we stop those dreams, though? Yes, we can, Tim. So just by actually realising what's going on, what behaviours we're exhibiting, the patterns we're going through, just by deciding to change them, then the dream will fade away. Let's just do a few quickies before we get to the email which Tim's got there. I had a weird dream last night which involved my husband giving birth. Just in one line, tell us what that's all about, <laughs> <laughs> if that's possible. It's a very common dream, the husband giving birth. So any time we dream about giving birth, there's some labour of love that the husband's involved in, there's some idea that he's conceived, there's been a gestation period for that, and now the labour of love is coming out into the light. OK, here's the email.
email. This is from Pam, who says, I dreamt my neighbour had a raven she kept in a cage, which she asked me to help her get rid of because she didn't want it anymore. I was going to give the bird to another friend, but she changed her mind at the last minute and wouldn't take it. Then my friend with the raven got all stressed and upset with me because I wasn't able to help her. I called a few animal rescue places, but nobody would take the raven. I never actually saw the raven in the cage in the dream, but I could hear it squawking. Why a raven, I wonder? Well, this is a great dream. So one of the things that I do a lot in analysing dreams is listen to the language. And we've spoken about this before, about puns and homophones and homonyms, where words kind of sound the same as something else. So in Pam's dream, this is great. So anytime you dream about a bird, a bird is a creature of the sky. So it's to do with our thoughts and ideas. Usually a raven is quite a powerful bird and it's something to do with some change in Pam's life, but it can also be something where she might be raven on a bit about something. <laughs> so because of that, she usually keeps all these raves to herself. She keeps them all caged up and she's trying to find a friend to chat to and express these to, but she can't do that because the friend won't accept these ravings. So then she phones up animal rescue people because she's asking for help, but no one's coming to her. So what the message for Pam is that sometimes she just needs to let rip and have a bit of a rave. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure what I think about that. Have you heard about a dream with a raven in it before? Yes, quite a few. Really? Yeah. yeah. And there's specifically a raven? Yes. So every individual animal will represent some part of our instincts and impulses. All very good. Ian Wallace, of course, is the professional dream psychologist and author, analysing your dreams. Thank you very much for the calls. Thank you very much for all the emails. Sorry if we didn't get to yours. And Ian Wallace will return.